today. My name is David. Can you guys say hi, David? Oh, excellent. I can tell you can hear me because you're waving back at me. Uh, can I see a thumbs up? How about a thumbs up? Oh, excellent. I'm so glad you're all joining me today. Um, I get to work here at the Essex County Environmental Center at the Nature Center. I'm in the town of Roseland in a park called West Essex Park. And it's part of our Essex County Park System. Oh, I've got the logo on my jacket. The Essex County Park System. And I bet you've all been to our parks before. Like, um, raise your hand if you've ever been to Branchbrook Park. Maybe you're going to go this week or next to see the cherry blossoms in bloom. Or maybe you've been to Yantico Park. Well, good. What about um, Verona Park? Maybe Brookdale Park? Good. How about Turtleback Zoo? Yeah, that's an Essex County Park. Cool. Same with South Mountain Reservation and Eagle Rock Reservation and Mills Reservation. So there's a lot of wonderful opportunities for us right here in Essex County to explore and enjoy nature. And my program today is something is about something that you can do in nature. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in nature, and that is to go camping, to go camping. So let me see if you've camped before, give me a thumbs up. If you've ever camped before, give me a thumbs up. Oh, terrific. If you've never camped, if you've never ever camped, thumbs down. Oh, good. I see a lot of thumbs up. Um, 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 I hope when you camped, you had a great time and you enjoyed it. There's so many things that you can do when you go camping, but sometimes there's a lot that you need to bring with you to enjoy yourself. Some might bring less, some might bring more, but we're going to talk today about what, uh, what you might want to pack in your bag. So let me show you, show you what I mean by that. I've got my big backpack here. And if you camp a lot and you hike, you might even hike and carry your bag. You might carry this on your back through the forest to get to your destination. Maybe you're trying to explore a mountain range or you wanna go visit a pond or a lake. Or maybe you're finding somewhere to go fishing. Well, you might actually take things with you uh, in a pack on your back so you can go do that. That's one way people camp, but a lot of people also camp out of their car. You might just load up your car and you can pull everything out of the back of your car. So depending on what kind of camping you're doing and how far you're going, you might, you might make those decisions about what you would want to bring. So before I show you what's in my pack, I wanna ask you guys, what would you bring? Can you guys look around for a moment? You can look around your room or your home. Let's take 30 seconds. This is like a scavenger hunt. I want you to find one thing, maybe two things that you would bring with you. What's something that you would want to have with you if you were camping? Is there something that you can bring over? Or if you have your video off, you're welcome to type it. Arnav, you have something already? If I would go camping, I would bring my sleeping bag and tent. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Good. Those are definitely priorities. A sleeping bag to stay warm and a tent to, to protect yourself from the wind, from the rain, from, from whatever the weather may be. Oh, Sebastian, what do you have? Bug spray. Bug spray. Excellent. So smart. Um, I actually, this is a wonderful time right now this time of year to go camping because the mosquitoes aren't out yet. Uh, so I actually love to go camping in the spring and the fall when you don't have to worry as much about the mosquitoes. Uh, but sometimes you still have to check for those, those, those other eight-legged pests called ticks. So even though it's, it's early April, I, when I walk out here, I don't have to worry about mosquitoes today, but I still check carefully for ticks. And I actually have light colored pants. You see, I have like light brown pants. So if I have a tick on me, if I have a bug on me, I'm going to see the contrast. I'll be able to more easily see the bug and just flick it off, <laughs> just get it off me. Um, so, but, but bug, bug spray, so a very important thing to have with you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, what else, anything else, Arlene? Did you have something? Some books and forest spray. Oh, good, but books, yeah, some entertainment. One of the most enjoyable things is just sitting out here in the fresh air and reading a good book. And, and I, I think she also said forest spray or bug spray. Uh, Julia, did you have something to share? 
Um, well, if you're like staying through the night and the camping, I might bring a few flashlights. Oh, smart flashlights. Yeah. And maybe some like a hat just in case. Oh, excellent. Yeah, flashlights. It can get dark really quickly. You know, 730. It's going to be dark tonight. And it'd be good to have flashlights to be able and to see. And maybe, well. maybe a compass. Maybe a compass. Compass. Excellent. Yep. Good. Make sure you find your way. Excellent. 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 Good. Is there anybody that I missed that wanted to share something they might bring? I, I thought one of you were going to say toilet paper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many important things that, that you want to have that you wouldn't want to forget. Uh, and you guys gave me some terrific answers. Let me show you what I have in my pack. All right. So let's see, I'm going to start right in the top. There's a top compartment. This is sometimes for things you want to get to quickly. So like if I, um, if I cut myself, what would I want to pull out of the top of my pack quickly? You can go ahead. You can just unmute or type right away. Band-aid. Band-aid, yep. Or a first aid kit or something. <laughs> Excellent. Here's my, you got it, my first aid kit. And in here I have, I have all kinds of little medical doodads, things like band-aids and cleaning pads so I can quickly patch myself up. I don't want to go searching for this. I just want to know immediately where it is. So I like to keep it right in the top of my pack. Yeah. What if uh, I get thirsty? That's something else I want to have. Water handy. bottle. Yeah, it's good to stay hydrated. So important to stay hydrated. Actually, before I even go camping, before I even start a hike, I like to drink a lot of water. So I'm hydrated before I even begin. Arnab, did you want to say something? I was going to say one of the things you told all the other friends, so I was going to answer one. Well, I um, did you want to say something now, or you did, or, or somebody else did? I couldn't. Remember, you are telling the things you need for camping that you yeah. were showing in your bag. You told, uh, you took all the other friends, so I wanted to answer one of those things. Oh, did you still want to say something, or somebody else said it? I did not have to say nothing. Just answer one question from your taking something out from your bag. Okay, thank you. Um, here's the, what, what I thought you guys were going to say. That's, uh, you have to have, right? I don't want to go looking for that either. Just like my first aid kit, my water, my first aid and my toilet paper. Know where it is, right? Um, there's some other things I have in, top, in the top too. Um, um, I think it was, uh, maybe it was Julia who mentioned a flashlight. I do have flashlights in here that I'll show you in a moment. But sometimes I run a string of lights on my tent. So I could plug this into my cell phone charger and I could have lights on my tent. So just to be festive, just to have some, have, have, have my tent at night look more comforting and, you know, comfortable so it doesn't seem like I'm all out there in the dark. But in here, I do have my flashlights. And I, one of the things that I prefer to use is a flashlight called a headlamp. So I can put this on my head and then I have my light on my head and I can still use both hands. I don't have to hold the flashlight in one hand. So a headlamp is a wonderful thing to have. I'll tell you though, what I like to do is at dinner time, before it gets dark, I put this on my head. That way I have it when I need it. I don't have to go looking for it in the dark. So I do keep a, a kit which has like some, some miscellaneous things that I might wanna have with me. Like if it's cold, I can put some hand warmers in my, in my, on my hands or even in the bottom of my sleeping bag to keep my feet warm. Um, 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 we mentioned a book, but a little kit here that teaches you how to tie knots. There's a lot of knots that are important to camping. So a little bit of cordage and a kit to learn some knots. Oh, a glow stick is fun to have. So if you're walking at night, uh, everybody else also can see where you're going because you've got that bright glow stick. Or maybe you hang that up on your tent or above your tent. So if you go to the bathroom at night, you can find your tent right away because you see the light of the glow stick. Yeah. Um, um, Sebastian mentioned the bug spray. I've got some bug spray too. Yep. Um, let's see. Lots of things, lots of things. Um, 
that you might you might bring with you. I have a whole a whole baggie of things here. Um, let me see what else might be interesting to you guys. Oh, a little rain poncho. If I know it's going to rain, I definitely bring a big raincoat. But if it's not scheduled to rain, if it's not forecasted to rain, I just bring a little poncho. Just as like an emergency rain jacket. So that's a nice, small, lightweight rain jacket to have in my kit. Um, and then we mentioned the compass. I actually wear some things on me. So I always have them with me. And I'll show you what those are. I do sometimes wear my compass around my neck. So then I can hold it out flat in the palm of my hand. And, oh, look at that. I'm already, I'm already facing north. So the red needle always points north. So I put, and then I put Fred in the shed. There's a housing here that spins, but I, I can practice my compass skills before I go. I might even practice them walking around town. Uh, and that way when I'm camping, I, I, I know exactly how to use my compass. I don't get confused about that. So this way I can, I can maintain my, my direction of travel. Yeah, but I also have around my neck, I've got a whistle and I have a lighter. So these are two important things to me if I'm starting my fire or maybe again, I go to the bathroom at night, but I walk away and I all of a sudden it's dark and my flashlight doesn't work. Well, I can blow my whistle and, and have a buddy help me out. So um, that can be important to have. And there's one more thing I'm wearing around my neck right now. And that's a knife. Sometimes when you go camping, you might have a knife with you. This is a, a nice small little knife for doing some basic camp chores that I, for things that I might need to do around camp. But I'm always very, very careful with that when I use it. I tuck it back in. I, I make sure it's locked in place when I'm, when I'm done using it. And when I am using it, I make sure that there's nobody in my perimeter, that there's nobody in my blood bubble. There's nobody near me because I wouldn't want anybody near me when I'm using a tool like a, like a knife. Yeah, Arnav. I was saying that if like what does in the compass what what does the white needle do? Like which like if the red needle is I know the red needle goes to north right. and what, but then what does the white needle go to? What, what's the opposite direction of north? South. South. The white point south. Yeah, and it's magnetic. So I hold it in the palm of my hand. I'm not gonna hold it in this hand because I have a metal ring on my wedding ring. So I don't want the metal here to change the, the mag, to move the magnetic needle. There's a chance this could be magnetized and move the needle. So I hold it in the palm of my open empty hand to read that compass. Yeah, if you're interested in learning compass skills, that's something that I enjoy teaching here at the Environmental Center. Uh, if you get a chance to visit, that's something we could uh, we could definitely spend some time on. So in the top of the pack, I also have cordage, some rope. There's often different things you might need rope for when you're camping. And I like to have a pair of gloves. So if I'm collecting firewood, if I'm using a knife or a saw, or I'm working on my campfire, I can wear my gloves for some safety for protection. Also, if it gets cold, I might wear my gloves. Sometimes in the morning it's cold. Sometimes in the evening it's cold. In the daytime, right now it's absolutely gorgeous out. But this morning, 6:30 a.m., it was it was cold. It was cold this morning, so it's good to have those different layers of clothing. I didn't pack clothing in my bag for this demonstration, uh, but but absolutely you uh, absolutely you would you would wanna have different layers of clothing. So that might mean gloves, it might mean a hat, it might mean a jacket. Depending on the weather, you have to determine what kind of layering you're going to wear. Often my very first layer is a wicking layer. If you guys ever wore um, um, like something you go to, the, to go to the gym in, if you're gonna sweat, sometimes you buy wicking clothing, like dry fit style clothing. And that helps to wick moisture away from your skin so that you stay dry. So my first layer is often a piece of wicking clothing and then a piece of clothing that provides warmth. And then the outside layer is for wet, is like a rain jacket or you know, rain, a rain pants. So wicking 
warmth, and wet. Those are my three layers of clothing that I like to wear to protect myself. You know, but every trip is different. Every, you know, every trip is different depending on what the weather is going to be. So, so it's hard to just leave my bag packed. I usually lay everything out before I go on a trip and I look at each item and I make sure it's something that I need. Um, it's something that I want to have with me that I wouldn't want to leave behind. So every trip I, I review my, my gear list. Now in the pack, um, I have some things. I didn't put the clothing in here because every trip is different, but I did bring my, uh, my bag that I might even hang, a, hang in a tree so that animals don't get to it. What do you think? What do you think I'm talking about? What's in here? You can say it out loud. Maybe food. Food. You got it. What kind of food would you guys want to bring with you? What food would you pack? Energy bars. Oh, great idea. Energy bars. Yeah. Yeah. Something easy. You don't have to cook it, right? No microwave out here. You could, of course, make a campfire or use a camp stove, but an energy bar is an excellent excellent uh, high energy snack you know, anything else you would pack what else orange juice oh orange juice good some sugary juice to to keep you going arnav you can say it if you have something else I was, i'm going to say you can pack some cat's mix or maybe some mango Oh, great. Oh, I, those are sound delicious. Chex Mix and mangoes. Those are great ideas. Chex Mix, nice and nice and light. And the, the may and a great uh, fun snack. And the mangoes, especially if they're dry, dried fruit would be a good treat. If you dry it out, it'll be lightweight and it's not going to, it's not going to rot or drip or get messy. If you had real, if you had fresh mango and you had that mango juice on your hands, well, that might attract some bugs. Um, um, and get sticky, so you might not want to do that. But dried fruit is a great choice on a on a hike. Let me see what I have. So oh, go ahead. Bread and Julia. Or something? Julia. A bread you... for a little sandwich. Oh, excellent! Bread for a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Bread. Some people bring hard tack. They bring hard bread and some cheese, and that's a good trail treat because if the bread is hard. You, if it's dried and hard, it's not gonna not gonna go moldy like that fresh, um, fresh fresh white bread might. Yeah, I like to bring fajitas. Those wraps, those wraps are lightweight, and um, um, they're useful for many different things. So those fajita wraps are a great item. Julia, did you have another? Go right ahead. I might also bring some pebbles just in case when I go to the bathroom, I can find my way back. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, some pebbles. Yeah, yeah. Make a little trail for yourself. That would be fun. Let me show. I, well, one thing I bring is garb a garbage bag. Um, I have a garbage bag in here for any little bits of trash. Even if it's not mine, I try to leave a place better than I found it. I like that idea of stewardship. So I'm camping, but if I see any little bits of garbage scrap, it doesn't belong in the woods. So I try to bring it home with me. Uh, a little bit of tin foil. Sometimes I might cook in tin foil on the campfire. Um, I've got some some paper towel napkin in here, uh, and well, and some some backup matches for starting the fire. But I showed you that I was also wearing the lighter on my neck. Um, I also like to bring hot chocolate. I have a nice hot drink um, during at some point on the trip. That's a nice a nice treat. Some hot chocolate, and for breakfast, oatmeal. I like to have oatmeal because it's easy. I can boil up some water put some hot water into my cup with, with the oatmeal and it's a quick, easy meal to make and it's delicious. So oatmeal is a great, a great thing to bring along. Arnav, go right ahead. When I went to the Memorial Park, I also, I saw a little bit of trash in the ocean where ducks swim. Yeah, yeah, definitely doesn't belong there. So April is our Earth Month. Um, we have Earth Day coming up later in April, and it's just, a, it's, it's springtime. It's, you know, to me, it's a, um, it's a reminder of just how special our, our planet Earth is. And, you know, the other day I was showing a group of kids, um, I had this little Earth toy, and I was saying, 
if you were Mother Earth, if you were Planet Earth, what would you want to say to the people? And one of the kids um, raised his hand in the back row. I don't even know if he was paying attention, but he said, Mr. David, I would say if I was Planet Earth, I would say, you take care of me and I'll take care of you. I, I thought that was really sweet. You take care of me and I'll take care of you. I think that would be a good message for Mother Earth. Uh, you had mentioned the, uh, the power bar. Here's a, uh, this is a Nature Valley bar. This is a good little trail treat. A little bit of tuna salad for my sandwich. Like Julia mentioned, a sandwich, maybe a tuna sandwich. Uh, oh, oh, here's another one, two of them. Oh, mashed potatoes. Some hot mashed potatoes when it gets cold. Yeah. How about some chili mac? These are popular, these dehydrated meals. A lot of people love to bring dehydrated meals camping because you can, you open this up, you pour boiling water into it, you can seal it up and you just wait a few minutes and it rehydrates. And then you've got a warm, hot meal inside. And it's a lot of calories. This is 660 calories per container. So that's a good boost of calories. So you can fuel up your body for the adventure that you're having. Well, wow. oh, this is a popular camping treat. Anybody know about Spam? Spam. So this, some people like to fry this on a, on the pan, in a pan or on a stick when you're camping. It's kind of like hot dog. You, a lot of people like to bring hot dogs camping and you might put it on a stick and roast it over the fire. Well, Spam is a, is a, is a treat similar to that. Marshmallows. Any, anybody ever have s'mores? S'mores, your marshmallows, your chocolate, your My mom chocolate. doesn't always let me have them because she thinks they're too sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah, too sweet. And then you go crazy if you eat too much sugar. So, but, uh, you know, when you're camping, sometimes it's a special treat. You might have marshmallows, chocolate, and graham cracker. That's a, that's a popular treat when you go camping. So, oh, we got one or two more items in here. Oh, maybe a, just a little sugar powder boost. I can put this in my water bottle. This is a vitamin C. I can put that in my water bottle for a boost. Um, and then I have this rope. Oh, you know what I have? Oh, one more thing before I show you the rope. It's not a fork. It's not a spoon. What is it? Arlene. A spork? You got it. Yep, that's the spork. This is titanium too. It's super lightweight and it's one utensil. So I don't have to wash a fork, a spoon and a fork. I just wash my spork. Well, to be honest with you, when I'm camping, I usually just lick it clean. <laughs> or sometimes I boil water. I can boil, put the spoon in my pot and boil water in there. And then the boiling water kills the bacteria. But uh, one spork is my utensil. So I usually I eat my breakfast, lunch and dinner out of the same container with the same spork. And so it's less to carry and it's less waste. But when I'm done, I put everything back in the bag and I actually use this long line to hang it from a tree. I will actually attach something to this, like my water bottle and I throw it over a big branch. I'll throw it over a big branch high up in a tree and then I can pull up my bag. I'll clip, use the carabiner to, to clip it on. And then I can, I can pull the rope to pull up the bag and hang it off of a branch up high in a tree. So I wanna hang it so mostly so mice don't get into it. I know everybody asks about bears, but I'm really more concerned about mice and even raccoons. Those are the only two critters. I've camped hundreds of times and those are the only two critters who have given me trouble. They sometimes wanna to get to your food. Um, but I also hang the bag because then bears can't get to it if there happens to be a bear where you're camping. It's really quite unlikely. There are about 3,500 bears that live in New Jersey, uh, but, but there's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big, they're pretty spread out and they're very scared of us. So it's very unlikely you would see a bear camping, but even still, I like to hang my food bag way up in a tree, Julia. But you have the spoon and the fork thing. Yeah. And we have this thing that has the knife here, oh. and there's a spoon here. 
So that's cool. And you can reuse that. You can use that again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And you've got nothing to throw out. There's nothing to throw out. So, you know, I, I like to, we talk a lot about recycling here. That's even better than recycling. That's reusing. So we, we, re, we uh, you know, we can reduce, reuse, recycle, and rethink what we're doing. So I like that utensil. You know, you keep using it. You're not throwing it out. You know, I just, it's, you don't want to be making all that trash, especially when you're camping because there's no garbage can out here, right? There's no trash can out here. So I don't want to have any trash to, to have to manage. Yeah. So I showed you the food bag. Let's see what else is in here. I talked a little bit about cooking the food. And I mentioned a campfire. Um, a lot of the fun of camping is often sitting around the campfire, cooking on the campfire, uh, sometimes telling stories around the campfire. Um, I like to call the campfire the caveman TV, right? You listen to stories and you watch the campfire TV. Um, there's only one channel, but it's a good one, right? It's a good channel to watch. You just stare into it and use your imagination. But um, um, we often cook over a stove as well. There's so many different kinds of stoves. If you ever go to a camping store like REI, Camp More, EMS, Sierra Trading Company, um, or even like a sports authority or a Dick's Sporting Goods, you can look at these products. One of the products, one of the stoves that I like to use is called a whisper light. So this is very similar to the stove you might have in your kitchen, but it's portable, I can take it with me. So this is a whisper light stove and it connects to this bottle. This is a fuel bottle. So I have, I have fuel in here that hooks up that hooks up to here. And then I can, with a lighter, turn my stove on and I'll have a flame that I can cook with. So now with my stove and my fuel, I can use a little pot like this and I can cook. This fits two cups also, isn't that cool? So it's good to have things that nest. You know, I wouldn't want this to be wasted empty space in my pack. So it fits two cups and then I can even put things in here. Uh, so like if, if I make hot chocolate, I can make you a cup and I can have a cup, All right? But my, um, my little stove could balance, balance right on top and I could boil, boil water in here. And then I could use that boiled water to do many different things. Or I could have a small frying pan. I could cook with a small frying pan on top. So there's a lot of different options. And a lot of the fun, I think a lot of the fun of camping is getting to use gear, is getting to use all this different gear. I know the friends that I camp with, they all have make different choices. They all have different types of camping equipment. And, and there's, no, there's often no right or wrong answer to what you choose. Um, you might just go to the camping store and decide that you have a preference. There's a type of stove or a type of pot or pan that you like to use. Sometimes it takes lots of camping to really figure it out, um, to try different types of equipment and figure out what works best for you, what your camping style is. Everybody camps differently. So I'm gonna put some of that back in. And I have a little bag for it too. I like to have everything in its own little carrying case. It just keeps everything neatly organized. Um, I don't wanna be out there like uh, all messy out while I'm camping. I like to have things neat, clean and organized. So I have all these different kits like my, my pot and stove kit, my first aid kit, right? This, is, this one is my miscellaneous catch-all that had the glow stick and the headlamp and the cordage and the bug spray. And then um, in here, I have a couple other items to share with you. If you do collect water, uh, it's important that you have a filter. Um, I might scoop up water at the river and then I can, well, and then I might boil it to clean it. I might use a UV filter. There's a UV filter I like to bring and use to, to filter my, clean my water. But sometimes I use a pump. Um, this is what I most of the time bring with me. 
a water pump, and I'll show you that. You just have to set it up. This would go in the water, and it connects here. So the pump brings the water up, pump, pump, pump. It filters through here, and then it pours out here into my water bottle. So this is called a Katahdin filter. And this is wonderful. If you have, if you have a, a fresh water source, like a pond or a lake or a stream, you can, you can pump water right out through the filter and into your water bottle. So this is a wonderful camping filter to use. Um, and then when I'm done, let me take that out. I make sure that I put the portion that was in contact with the dirty water into my Ziploc here, because I don't want that dirty water to contaminate my clean water. So this was in contact with the pond or the lake or the stream. So I put it back in the Ziploc and then the clean water came through here and out here into my water bottle. So it would be like that. If I had one of those plastic Nalgene's, this would flip, fit right into the big plastic Nalgene. So this is meant to go with, an, with a plastic Nalgene bottle. Yeah. So lots of different ways to filter, just like there's lots of different stoves I was talking about. Um, um, most of the time, actually most of the time when I camp, I don't even bring a filter. I just use my metal container. I use my pot and I boil my water. So if I have a fire at night, I'll just boil my water and refill my water bottles. And then I'll be able to, to have a hot drink, a tea at night. But by the morning time, it's cold water and it's, it's fresh and delicious to drink. Couple other items. You can see I have my tent already set up, but the tent fits in the bag as well. So here's another tent. And then, I think this is one of the first things we mentioned, Arnav mentioned this one, the sleeping bag. So, uh, one of the first things I like to do when I get to camp is take out my sleeping bag because it's stuffed in the sack, but I want it to fluff up. I want it to be fluffy and warm. So I like to take it out and set it up inside. So let me show you, let me show you camp. So I can set up my camp. I've got my tent. Um, I do have a rain fly. I did not put the rain tarp on top because it's such a beautiful day right now. But if I was staying here overnight, I absolutely would set up the rain tarp because you just never know if it's going to start to, to to drizzle and uh, and you know get get everything wet. So a rain tarp on top of the tent is is very important. And tents tents most of the time come with that protection. They come with that rain tarp. Under the tent, I have a tarp. Um, this is some nice soft ground. I'm underneath a spruce tree, but it's good to have a tarp as an extra layer of padding and protection, but also it provides waterproof underneath the tent. So if it rains, the rain's not going to come right up to the tent floor. It'll hopefully go underneath the tarp, and the tarp will provide another layer of protection. Uh, then in the tent, I have a pad. This is a this is a um, a Z pad. Check this out. This was attached to the side of my backpack. Uh, I like to use these because I can bring it out and I can sit out in the sun on my pad. I can sit at the at the lake and go fishing and sit on the pad. I can sit at the campfire and be on the pad. Um, and then when I'm ready for sleep, I can put it in the tent. And this is like my mattress now. So the pad's going to be like a mattress. Um, some people buy the blow-up pads. I also, those are wonderful too, where you, you blow into it and you pump up the pad with your breath. Those are great, but, but they're harder to use outside of the tent because you don't want them to pop, right? I wouldn't want to use that pad where there's sharp sticks and stones because then the blow-up pad might pop like a balloon. But this foam pad, it doesn't, it can't pop, it can't break. So these are these are sometimes 
um, very good choices, um, especially for kids. Sometimes when you get older, you you need us need more protection on your back. Your back starts to hurt, and then you want a thicker, fluffier air mattress. So you might need a bigger pad than this than this as you get older. And so, so now I'm all set. I can um, I can use a sweatshirt as a pillow if I wanted. Um, you can make a pillow out of your clothing, um, or you can sometimes you can you can also buy a small pillow. They make blow up pillows again like a balloon. You blow into it and you've got a warm, comfortable place to put your head at night. So, so that's um, that's really the basics of um, of camping, camping 101. Those are the things that I that I bring with me to to not only survive in the wild, but to thrive, right? To, uh, to enjoy myself out here in nature. Um, so I could, I could show you guys around a little more if you had any questions. Did anybody have any questions? Arlene, are you showing me your, uh, your notes? It's good to make a list if, um, you know, it's good to start a list. I, I keep a written list of the things that I want to pack and have with me so I can simply check my list. I can read down my list and make sure I have what I need. So Arlene is showing me a, a handwritten list of items and notes, and that's really important to have. Um, kind of like a camping journal. You can just keep improving on your experience by, by taking notes. Um, Julia, did you have any questions or Arnav, you can go ahead and ask a question. Do we have to leave now? I, I was going to say that you can even have for camping like us, like you can have a mattress behind you or a blanket down. It doesn't yeah. soft. Yeah, you can definitely bring bring thicker mattresses than this than this uh, foam pad that I have. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And especially if you're camping out of your car, you can bring all sorts of extra padding. Put a put a couple blankets underneath you as well. I do the, have... pad, the pad is not just for for um, comfort on your back. Oh, it's very windy, so I'm going to come in here so the wind doesn't um, make make it hard to hear. Um, the pad is not just for comfort on your back, but it also provides insulation from the ground. The, your back can get very, very cold if you're sleeping on the ground. So that pad acts as insulation to keep your, your backside warm. But Julia. And also you could bring a one of those mats you have and a blow up mat because, well, you can keep the blow up mat in the tent and then the mat, like the mat you had, like you can bring it outside or something. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. To have both of them would be, would be excellent. Yeah. Yeah. For terrific. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something you might like to do. So um, if, if you guys are looking for places to go camping, New Jersey has New Jersey state parks. Uh, if you were to, if you were to do a search for New Jersey State Parks, there are a lot of wonderful parks to go camping at. Some of my favorites um, are um, Voorhees State Park, Stokes State Park, Jenny Jump State Park. There's a lot of wonderful camping locations in New Jersey. Um, um, there's also close closer to us uh, in Morris County, there's a park called Malon Dickerson Reservation. A wonderful place to park is Malon Dickerson Reservation in Morris County, a place to, to camp. Did I say park? <laughs> a place to camp. Uh, so, so that's a neat place. One of my favorite reasons that place, I like to go there, is because if you are new to camping, you're still really close to Jefferson Dairy, where you can get ice cream, Jefferson Diner, a nice place to get some food. Um, so, so it's kind of it's kind of you're camping out in the wilderness, having this wonderful, beautiful, peaceful nature experience, but you're also 15 minutes uh, from ice cream and food and a supermarket. So, so if you forgot something, if, if you just want to go out for an amenity, 
it's easy enough to uh, to do that. But as you get more and more experienced, you might start traveling deeper and deeper into the wilderness, deeper into the forest. And you might go on hiking trails like the Appalachian Trail or the Batona Trail in the Pinelands uh, or the North Bell Placid Trail in New York. And you might start you might start exploring further and further, deeper and deeper into the wilds. So enough, the wind is right on time. Um, so um, um, I wanna thank you all for, for joining me for, for a camping presentation. Uh, um, I appreciate that, that, um, that you guys were all here participating. If you stick around and you have questions, I'm glad to stick around with you a few more minutes. Julia. Um, which, which place did you say was the best place for a beginner? I like a, par a park called Malon Dickerson, M-A-H-L-O-N. Dickerson, D-I-C-K-E-R-S-O-N. Yeah, it's a it's a nice park with a pond you can explore called Saffin Pond. There's a rail trail, like an old railroad trail, so you can ride your bike. If you bring a bike, your family can ride bikes on an old rail trail. And it's only, okay. it's probably about 35, 30 minutes from you. So it's not that far, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, Arlene. Can we leave now? <laughs> yes, but thank you again for joining me, uh, um, you know, virtually with the Essex County Environmental Center. And if you guys ever have camping questions, please reach out. Again, my name is David. You're always welcome to send me an email or, or call me up at the Essex County Environmental Center. I'd be glad to talk with you about anything nature, anything, anything related to the environment. And thank you very much, David, for the, the camping presentation. It was really cool. And thank you, everybody, for coming to it. I hope you all got some really good ideas. Thank you, guys. Be well. Stay wild. Wait, is it this one? Yes.